Okay, so Manchester United then going to be back in action Saturday 5.30. Cannot wait. This international break dragged on far too long. Thank God it's over. Just the disappointing thing is there's another one next month. But we're back against Liverpool, the biggest rivalry in English football. Uh, the biggest game on the football calendar for every fan in the Barclays Premier League. Anticipating this big, great big match. And uh, real significance on this one. Both teams lost their last Premier League games. Liverpool losing 3-0 at home uh, to West Ham. Absolutely terrible. Manchester United had a tricky game away at Swansea and uh, lost for a mistake from Romero. Or probably two mistakes from Romero. So Manchester United going into this game in a must-win game really. Certainly cannot afford to lose this match. Uh, if they lose this match, it really will be an absolute disaster. David De Gea then is going to be back in, back between the sticks tomorrow. Fantastic. Uh, a lot better than Romero. Uh, I would have preferred to have seen Valdez uh, deputising goal, but wasn't to be. Uh, but absolutely fantastic. He's going to be back in goal. Really will we'll put, put a lot more still at that back line uh, for Manchester United. Defence will be a lot more solid uh, looking uh, to be one of the better uh, defences in the Barclays Premier League. Uh, obviously we've got some consistency in the back line. I would presume it's going to be the same back line uh, against uh, Swansea. I would like to see Marcus Rojo come back into the lineup. I know he's had some problems. He needs to sort himself out. Had some passport problems. Should have got that sorted. Should get his head down, knuckle down, and I think he can be a decent player. Uh, Daily Blind uh, is good at deputising in centre-back but only over a short period of time long term I think he will get found out especially against bigger oppos better opposition uh, and he didn't have the best of game for Holland against Turkey so uh, we'll have to wait and see there but hopefully Rojo can come back in in the next game or two uh, but in midfield obviously we've got Michael Carrick out injured which is a big blow we've not got a great win percentage without Michael Carrick so absolutely uh, devastated that he can't uh, play. I know we've got now a lot more, a lot more options in midfield, but still, Michael Carrick is is a fantastic player to have in there. Anyone that says not, uh, obviously doesn't know football. And uh, we've obviously got Schweinsteiger and Schneiderlin who will probably play in there. I didn't, I don't really like to see that combination when we're playing at home against the likes of Newcastle, where teams are going to just sit back for long periods and, de and defend. Uh, but I, I expect Liverpool to have, have a bit more of the game than Newcastle did in, the fi in our final third. Probably won't defend as much. I mean, Liverpool probably would before the game probably actually take a point out of it. Uh, they, they can't really afford to lose the game either. And away from home, they'd probably take that in the race for fourth place. But yeah, I think at home, uh, against lesser opposition, we shouldn't be playing Schneiderlin and Schweinsteiger together. I think it's a bit too defensive. But going into this game, I probably would play... Played the pair of them in there, and I think Louis Van Gaal will do that. Uh, I think further forward, I would personally play uh, Ander Herrera. I thought he was fantastic in the second half against Club Bruges. Uh, ob obviously, it was against lesser opposition. They had a lot of players injured, but uh, still fantastic. Obviously, they tired a bit. First half, when he was playing a deep role, he wasn't quite as good. I would prefer, long prefer him to see him in a bit of a deep role. Not too deep, but just in the midfield there. But in this game, I think we're... I would like to see him play and try the, the number 10 role again. But I've got a feeling it's going to be Marouin Fellaini in there. Now if it is Marouin Fellaini, I'm not going to be too disheartened. I know in the past I haven't really liked Marouin Fellaini. But he has, he has definitely grown on me. And I think he can be a vital squad member of the team this season. Obviously we've got Anthony Martial to come into the lineup at some point. I don't think he's going to start this game. Uh, I think he probably will be on the bench. And I think that's probably the best option. I think for this game we should play him on the right hand side when he comes on. Play Wayne Rooney as the as the number nine as he's been playing all season. Uh, obviously, congratulations to him on his 50th uh, England goal in the week. Hopefully, that will give him some confidence to go and smash these scousers. Obviously, Wayne really loves scoring against Liverpool. Hasn't scored so many over his career, but scored quite a few uh, at home against. I think he scored about three or four, maybe even more against Liverpool at home. So it's just away from home, he hasn't scored so many. But um, definitely he will be the main striker looking to get the goals. But yeah, I think Anthony Martial will come, come off the bench for this game, probably for one matter on the right. Uh, his pace can really, could really cause uh, Liverpool some problems down that side. We haven't got a lot of pace. And obviously with Memphis on the, the, the left-hand side, I think it could cause some problems uh, for, for Liverpool's defence. 
Uh, long term, I don't see, see him being there. I see him probably coming in as a number nine, the actual out and out striker, and probably really dropping uh, deeper into that number 10 role. But over the season, Anthony Martial is not going to play every single game anyway. Uh, he's only young, but long term, I do think that's where he's going to play. Now, where we can get a Liverpool, it's definitely Dejan Lovren. Obviously, he's been terrible. Uh, we see, it, see him against West Ham, he's absolutely terrible. Down by the corner flag, fluffing around with the ball, don't know what he was fucking doing. And uh, West Ham uh, crossed the ball in the box and scored. Now, last season, he was absolutely awful as well. Southampton must be absolutely laughing at the fact they paid 20 or over 20 million for him because he's been absolutely terrible. I think Jordan Henderson and Anna Milana are both out, if I'm not, not mistaken. Uh, or at least probably one of them probably will be because they've both, both had some knocks. So uh, obviously Henderson's uh, one of their main players in midfield, their captain. So that would be a big boost for Manchester United. I mean, he's quite a decent player on his day. Obviously, uh, Coutinho's out out through suspension, which I'm, I'm really pleased about because he's a quality player, their best player. So that takes away their threat there. And obviously, uh, Ben Tecker up front, uh, absolute beast, hasn't scored, has only scored one goal this season so far. Uh, but I think he could he could cause his problems. He caused Johnny Evans all kinds of problems last season, uh, turn him inside out and wallop the ball in the in the uh, net against us, uh, Aston Villa. So hopefully he doesn't cause uh, Daily Blind them sort of problems tomorrow, or else I'll be devastated. I think it's going to be a tight game. I'm going to go for a one 0 victory. I think we will just nick it. Hopefully David Head can come back with a clean sheet. Fantastic to have him back in goal. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think of the game? Where do you think it's going to be won and lost? Uh, and uh, please hit the like button as well. And subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, we're always looking for new people to come and check us out. Uh, and we should be back again after the game for our match, match uh, reaction to the game. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and talk to you all again soon. See ya.